Jared Weiss. I'm a medical oncologist at University of North Carolina Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center and faculty member at GRACE. It's my pleasure to talk to you today about the human papillomavirus in squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck. Here's the outline of what we'll talk about today. We'll start with the basics of HPV. We'll move on to the changing epidemiology of head and neck cancer. We'll spend the bulk of the talk discussing the better prognosis of HPV-related cancer. We'll move on to two caveats about how to apply this new knowledge to clinical care. And we'll conclude with some trials that I'm very excited about. Let's start with the nature of HPV. Only a few years ago, we taught that the number one, two, and three causes of head and neck cancer were smoking. And we taught that after that came alcohol, smokeless tobacco, betel nuts, and perhaps other factors. Increasingly, we're recognizing that there's a virus that can also cause head and neck cancer. This is the same HPV virus that's been known for a long time to cause genital warts and cervical cancer. Increasingly, sexual mores are finding oral sex more acceptable. And as a consequence, this oral sex derived virus is increasing in prevalence. It's acquired mostly through oral sex, but can also be acquired through deep kissing. Anatomically, we're talking about two distinct sites in the mouth. We're talking mostly about the tonsil and the base of the tongue that constitute the oropharynx. So the first major feature is this location in the oropharynx. Patients tend to be younger. Just like smoking-derived cancers, patients are more likely to be male. The association is viral more so than smoking, and so patients tend to be in much better shape. They tend to have less comorbid medical conditions. T stage, as in other cancers, is where the cancer starts. So it tends to be small, for example, in the tonsil where it starts, yet has greater spread to the lymph nodes locally. The incidence of HPV cancer are increasing, unlike decrease in smoking-related cancers. The prognosis is clearly better. And as of yet, we have no idea what optimal treatment is. Let's talk about these changing trends. Increasingly, head and neck cancer is positive for HPV. As a result, we can see that oropharynx cancer, these cancers of the tonsil and the base of the tongue, are increasing dramatically in incidence over time. Note that these are projections going forward. And we project that oral cavity and larynx cancers will go down quite a bit over time. Now we're looking at historic data. We can see that in the last decade or two, the overall trend is not for dramatic change in oropharynx cancer, but if we break it down by HPV status, we see in gray that the HPV negative traditional smoking derived cancers are decreasing in incidence, while these HPV positive cancers are dramatically increasing in incidence. Let's move on to the bulk of the existing data, which is about prognosis. This is a population derived study showing in gold that survival is better with HPV positive than HPV negative cancer. This is the study, however, that really put HPV on the map. It was a look back at an old RTOG study, RTOG0129. They did as they divided up their patients by the HPV positive patients shown at top. And P16 is just another way to look for HPV. And P16 negative at bottom. What you can see clearly at the top left there is that overall survival was much better for the HPV positive patients than the HPV negative patients with similar trends shown at right for progression-free survival. The authors then tried to model this. Traditionally, we look at three or five year survival and divide it up based on stage. The authors proposed that they could do a better job by dividing people up by HPV positive or negative. And they proposed a low risk group with 93% three-year survival, an intermediate group with 71% three-year survival, and a high-risk group with 46% three-year survival. Let's start with the HPV-positive tumors at the left. If you were HPV-positive and you had less than 10-pack year smoking history, they said you were in this low-risk group. And that low-risk group can be seen in blue in the curve at the right. However, it seemed that smoking modified risk even in HPV-positive cancers Patients with greater than 10 pack year smoking history were then subdivided further. 
If the nodal stage was low, N0 to N2A, they were still considered low risk, but with more advanced nodal status, they were considered intermediate risk. Interestingly, smoking still subdivided the HPV negative tumors. With an HPV negative tumor and greater than 10 pack years, you were high risk. If you were less than 10 pack years, it actually was the T stage, not the N stage, that best divided up these cancers. I find the extremes very interesting that by this model, even if you have a teensy, itsy, weeny cancer, if it's HPV negative and you have more than 10 pack years, you're considered high risk. In contrast, you could have a massive cancer with massive spread to the neck, but if you're HPV positive and you've never smoked, you're considered low risk. These data are very provocative and very exciting, and I look forward to confirmation in future studies. Here's another study that looked back on their population and confirmed this better prognosis of HPV-positive cancer. In the blue, you see better overall and failure-free survival in the HPV-positive subset, and in gold, worse outcomes in the HPV-negative subset. So clearly, HPV-positive patients have better prognosis. Thanks for listening. If you like and learn from our Grace Cast, you can subscribe on iTunes by just searching for the term Cancer Grace, find podcasts in the subject you want, pick a format of audio or video, and then just click subscribe. It's that easy. And for those of you who don't want to miss any of our programs, there's even a feed for all subjects. You can also find us on YouTube at Grace for Cancer Info. And that's the number four in one word, Grace for Cancer Info. Finally, if you haven't been there yet, please check out our Grace website at www.cancergrace.org. And don't forget that donate button in the upper right. Our content, which helps tens of thousands of cancer patients around the world every month, is made possible by your support.